just outside Seattle lies the town of Kirkland, a picturesque community on the shores of Lake Washington. It's home to 27-year-old Elena Busiakos. She was beautiful, very Greek. Her smile was really captivating. When she spoke with you, she would speak to you, not at you. You know, she would draw you in. She was just a very stunning girl, very sweet. She was as beautiful inside as she was on the outside. On New Year's Eve, 1998, Elena has just one wish for the year ahead. We all wrote down what our hopes and dreams for that year was gonna be. And so she wrote down that she was ready to meet her soulmates. She was ready to meet somebody that would cherish her and love her. Elena has had lots of suitors, but since her divorce, her main man has been Anthony, her seven-year-old son. She glowed when she was with him. She, she was a good mom, a very good mom. Her life revolved around Anthony. She wanted somebody that treated him good, and she wanted a traditional family. Just weeks after making her wish, Elena connects with a handsome man at the gym. She just told me she met somebody and she was in love. In love with a charismatic Sione Louie. I'd never seen her ever that completely enamored. He was very good with Anthony. That was very important to her. It wasn't just her and Sione, it was about her, Sione, and Anthony. A year into their relationship, Sione presents Elena with an engagement ring. You know, they'd been working towards getting engaged, so it wasn't a big surprise. In January of 2001, the couple moves to the nearby town of Woodenville to create their first home together. I liked them. I liked her together with him. They seemed very happy, and they did. They seemed really happy. But on Friday, February 2nd, just weeks before their wedding, the lives of Elena and Sione are changed forever. In the late afternoon, Elena meets up with her ex-husband in a downtown parking lot to drop off Anthony. They shared custody. She had him during the week, and then she would drop him off on the weekends. As night falls, Elena hurries home to pack for a weekend in California. That Saturday morning, she was going down to see her mom. But Elena's mother is sadly disappointed. Plane loads of travelers pass through the airport. Elena, however, is not among them. Sione contacts Elena's friends, but no one has seen her. It didn't seem like she had just got up and went missing or, you know, ran off. She wasn't that type of personality. On Monday, Elena fails to show up at work and doesn't pick up Anthony after school. She would never leave her son, ever. She would never not show up for work. She would never not call her mom if she wasn't going to get on the airplane. Certain something is wrong. Sione reaches out to the King County Sheriff's Department. She hasn't called me. She hasn't called her mom. And I've just been talking to her mom over and over, and then she's worried, I'm worried. Detective Sue Peters is alerted. Sione had reported he last saw her as they were getting ready for bed on Friday night. And the next morning, he was still asleep, and she left, which she assumed was to go to the airport. Detectives move into high gear. Then they were researching with the airlines, and it turns out she had not boarded an aircraft to California. Police mount an all-out search in the Seattle area. We need to find her. Sione actually took it upon himself to coordinate looking for Elena. We were passing out her flyers everywhere we could think about. Maybe somebody knows something, maybe somebody saw something that night. Sione actually put together a group of friends, rugby players, and searched the area of I-5 all the way to the airport, trying to locate her or her car. But seven days later, there is still no sign of Elena. 